this week the PCC Cup Series stays in Illinois as we go to the Decatur Raceway in Decatur. And Claire Ausier has opened up her championship lead to a whopping 85 points over Nicholas Cordova's second place with four races to go now. So drivers are going to have to capitalize as much as possible. They're even going to have a remote shot at catching her by the time that Cleveland rolls around. As some of you may know, Cleveland is a double points event. So the maximum amount of points a driver can gain in one race is 96 points. Uh, well, 48 points if a driver doesn't qualify. 96 points for the double points event in Cleveland. So that would only put a few cars in contention right now. I believe that would only put four cars in contention for the championship if we rolled into Cleveland this week. Claire Ossier, Nicholas Cordovo's Barry Juveno, and Ian Elias, and Cordovo's Juvenile and Elias would indeed be uh, huge long shots for the championship at that point. Fortunately for us, we have four races left in the season. Hopefully these drivers can make up some uh, points on Claire Ausier here today, as I believe she did not have the best qualifying effort, whereas Nicholas Cordovo's starts on the outside pole. Let's take you to the track. Qualifying on the pole for this race is Clara Kindall driving the number 14 for Manicor Engineering. This is her first pole of the season as she brings the field to the green flag. Nicholas Cordova's, as I mentioned before, started on the outside as uh, Kindall gets a great jump on Cordova's, brings the field through the snake as they start to file single file uh, at the front of the field. The first four now, uh, Cordova's, Gaspar de Souza, and I believe that's Sergei Yakovsky back there. Uh, go single file, and now the field goes through this uh, turn, this bend right here, and I believe there's some shenanigans going on in the back, as I think I saw a car go off in the back there. Uh, can't be too sure. We'll get a look at that here. Uh, Tom Delgado. Tom Delgado racing on the outside of Brian Gallagher in the 12 car, as uh, he just pushes wide in the turn and drives on the pavement portion. Good thing we have that pavement there, or else he would have gone... Uh, been stuck out there as he ends up in a hornet's nest back here in the field uh, racing with uh, cars back for 25th or so as oh we've got a car off behind him I believe that's Lenny Jacobs who got hooked by Pete Maverick in the 86 we're gonna see what happened here as oh he got hooked and he goes into the wall and he goes over multiple times multiple barrel rolls in that number 52 car no word on his medical condition as uh, Let's see, we're going to go on board with this, and oh, that's going to be ugly. That's a huge hit for Lenny Jacobs. No word on his medical condition, as I mentioned already. Here's uh, Chris Benson getting hooked by Barton Sandy going into the safer barrier, and Casey Lester with easily avoidance of the year there. We're going to go on board, I think this is Dan Foray, who, let's see here. Oh, he hooked Barton Sandy, and that put uh, Sandy into Chris Winter there. And uh, now, for Dodge of the Year, pretty much, here is uh, Casey Lester riding on board with him. And he just goes on right on by. Jams his foot on the accelerator, sticks it, and he continues on. Uh, he qualified way in the back, but it looks like uh, he's going to try and do what he can with that car, no matter the consequences. Uh, fear... No fear attitude from Casey Lester here today as Clara Kindall continues to lead here going to lap two. Here is Sergei Yakovsky in the 61 car, uh, and he's battling with Ingrid Hadeland, and that is Hadeland's first run in that 93 car. That's a new team, the Williams Racing Team. But uh, Sergei Yakovsky decided he'd come back here to Decatur trying to relive some glory from last year where he qualified on the pole. He won here back in, I think, 2008 or 2009. So he, uh, cir he circled this race on the schedule for Roos Autosport. As now we're looking at uh, Ryan Griffin qualifying for his first race in Smansfield. He gets hooked into the wall by Stringfellow Vincent. That car gets a bit airborne. And uh, that's a lot of front-end damage. I don't know if he's going to be able to continue on. As, oh, Preston Bell nearly hit him there. But it looks like the day is done for Ryan Griffin. We'll get another look at this here. As he just thought he was clear, came up in front of him, and Stringfellow Vincent just turned him and put him into the wall. Retro 80 Racing appears to be uh, the center of a lot of the wrecks here today, 
as Ryan Griffin gets that car rolling, he's going to come back to the pits and uh, retire from the race. Corey Dovos is starting to catch uh, Clara Kendall here as, oh, Barton Sandy is blocking her, uh, blocking Clara Kendall as it looks like Barton Sandy is going to let Corey Dovos take the lead now as Clara Kendall is held up there by the uh, lapped car of Sandy who had just come out of the pits a lap beforehand. And now Cora Dovos takes the lead and pulls out to a pretty decent gap over Kindall here as uh, Kindall, that was an uncharacteristic uh, mistake by Kindall, although uh, then again she is trying to shake her reputation as a crasher that she developed earlier in the season. Here's Sergei Yakovsky currently running fourth, trying to make up some ground on third place. He gets held up by Barton Sandy here, trying to get around him. Uh, he looks on the inside, hooks him, and Ingrid Hedlund gets in. Oh, no! That's a huge hit for both Barton Sandy. Oh, no! That is Jacob Eichholz and the championship leader. Oh, no. That's not a very good accident. Let's go on board with Ingrid Hadeland here, who just kind of had nowhere to go because... Barton Sandy got hooked by Yakovsky. Now we're going to go on board Ramsey Cockner, who is right behind this. And, uh, oh, wow. Uh, lucky Drivers number 82. As it looks like uh, a couple other cars got involved there. Jacob Eichholz, uh, Bobby Dollar clips. Uh, I believe that was... He clipped somebody who was sitting there as he soldiers on. Uh, his car wounded from hitting the inside wall there. And as we go on board, your championship leader, Claire Aussier now, as she just really had nowhere to go, absolutely nowhere to go. That was a brutal wreck for both Barton Sandy and Yakovsky. Uh, the race continues on, however, as here is uh, Kelly Blackwater, who I think ran over some debris. She slides wide and hits the pit wall. She's reporting a brake failure on that car due to some debris, so uh, she tried to get off track, but brakes ended up failing and she pit walled that car. Here is Tom Wilson driving the number 81 with, uh, I believe that's Mark Donovan right behind him. Both of these drivers made their debuts at, I believe they made their debuts at Dwyer, but we haven't really seen much of either of them since they've both wrecked out fairly early. So now they're finally getting a chance to show how, uh, how well they're doing in the fifth and fourth cars for their respective teams, Johnson Racing and Retro 80 Racing. They're currently running uh, in the top 15 right now. They're doing a pretty good job. Both of them running in the top 15 here early on. As now Nicholas Corridovos is getting challenged for the lead here a few laps afterwards. He, he's desperately blocking Clara Kindall as uh, he shut the door there on her and he's trying to do all he can. He starts to put some distance on her going up the climb and uh, Cordovos at this point is trying is gaining a lot of ground on Claire Aussier as Aussier fell out after that wreck so uh, he's trying to do all he can to stay in the lead get some bonus points and try and just keep uh, Kendall behind him as much as possible here in the early going as he's going to try and get some laps led and uh, hopefully gain some maximum points. As is Ian Elias here who is running in ninth place here on lap seven and if the race were to end now he would be third in the championship. So he's making quite a good gain here or at least trying to make a good gain uh, doing what he can with this race and hopefully hopefully he might be able to uh, close in on the championship a bit and this will become more of a dogfight at the top as uh, the race gets as the race to the championship gets a little closer as oh Ingrid Hadland makes some contact with John Kirkpatrick as she tries to put him a lap down John Kirkpatrick reporting that the handling's going a bit sour on that number 41 car doing all he can to soldier that car around track he's already fallen a lap down here and it's only uh, it's only lap number nine He's doing what he can in that number 41 car, but Ingrid Hadland, she drove for Zach Tech for the past two races, goes over to Williams Racing Team and uh, qualified that car in the top 10 and ran very strong in the qualifier. So showing her true worth on these road courses is Ingrid Hadland. Is now we've got Chris Winter diving onto pit road. He's got some right side damage on that car. Little early to be doing that. He's diving in on lap number 10 from the eighth position. 
So uh, a, kind of a risky gamble here for Chris Winter, even though he did get some damage on the side of that car. Here we've got a battle for, uh, this is a battle for third place between Gaspar D'Souza and Greg Maddox, who kind of came out of nowhere, uh, emerged from the rubble of that accident on lap number four. So he's doing what he can to try and get his way up to the front. Both of these cars are very strong on road courses. They're not necessarily in the hunt for the championship, but they're definitely going to try and hunt down and make their way up to the lead. Uh, but that might be a little hard as Clara Kindle and Nicholas Cordovos are setting a pace that appears to be unbeatable at this point. Here is Stringfellow Vincent diving into the pit lane on lap number 10 from 22nd. Uh, uh, I believe he's suffering some sort of problem with that car. And here we go. Here is a hornet's nest of cars here on lap number 11. This is uh, about 8th place to th uh, through about 15th. As now we're focused on John Bracci, who's running in, I think he's running in about 12th place in this shot. As Tom Delgado appears to have recovered from his off earlier in the race. And he's moved his way up back into the top 15. You see there, Ike Durbin is in front of this group. He's running in 7th place. Ian Elias uh, beginning to get a little, beginning to get uh, hunted down by, I think that's Lewis Jones up there in the 58. You've got Tom Wilson, uh, Brian Gallagher, a few other cars, Mark, uh, Mark Donovan, and I think that's Michael Grant in the background. So all three Australian motorsports cars are in this battle here. All three are running quite well as this battle has been going on all race. They've just managed to separate themselves a bit more and isolate this battle. As Oh, it looks like Tom Wilson just went off. Tom Wilson swung the turn a bit wide, got hooked by Brian Gallagher, and thrown off the course into the pit, end, uh, pit exit there. He'd uh, get that car going without a problem, though. A uh, little frustrated for Tom Wilson getting spun off there pretty early. As now Casey Lester in that number 23 doing a valiant job, uh, but it looks like he's going to go a lap down here early on lap number 13. Casey Lester falling back in that vintage looking pump energy car. Uh, one of the old pump energy lime flavors. Uh, promoting that as it came back onto the market recently. As Corey Dovos now begins to uh, extend his lead once more over Clara Kindall. As uh, here is the battle for third place as Greg Maddox looks on the inside of Gaspar D'Souza. Gaspar D'Souza made an uncharacteristic mistake there as he pulls alongside him here trying to get a move in into the bend here and I think he's going to be able to do it as Gaspar D'Souza uh, surrenders the position quite easily to Greg Maddox. Here is Cody Deke who is leading Robert Nelson and there's another group here of about five cars. They're running for about uh, I'd say about 20th place, uh, yeah, 18th, 18th, 23rd, got a few cars back here, Barry Juveno, one of them, is running quite up into the championship, here is John Kirkpatrick, whose car is, oh, he, he reported that the handling was going away, as he slides that car through this turn here, and goes off into the grass, um, this car is not handling well for Kirkpatrick, who's doing pretty much all he can to keep it on the track. Once again, he's quite underfunded and doing what he can with that car, uh, trying to soldier along. And uh, I think it's a I think it's a good showing by uh, the Manticore team to let him use their number here. I think he I, there are reports that he's going to field a, a three-car team for Charlotte since it's close to his home track, and uh, the clockwork cars are going to be clockwork cars. I meant Manticore. Excuse me. The Manticore cars are going to be in Brno for that week. As now Cameron Taylor makes a move on Ingrid Hadeland, who's starting to fall a little back. That was for sixth position. As Cameron Taylor doing what he can in this number 77, trying to put his car up further in the championship. Ramsey Cockner in front of him. That is also for position. They're running fifth, sixth, and seventh right now. Here is Pete Maverick running alongside Tom Wilson. And ooh, they're getting that's getting hairy. They're pushing each other off the track, and they both go hard into the wall. Pete Maverick flips that car, and so does Tom Wilson. As Pete Maverick goes end over end, that car somehow is still rolling, but uh, he decides to bring that to a stop there and get out. Somehow that car was still running, uh, but he decided it was uh, better to keep it off the track. As we go on board, Tom Wilson 
You see here, Pete Maverick sneaks up alongside, and oh, that's a hard hit. Uh, both drivers would be fine. Wasn't too much damage done to the camera. As it looks like Pete Maverick took the wildest of rides. He would be okay. Uh, the two actually ended up uh, joking about it a bit on the sidelines as uh, Pete Maverick, uh, Tom Wilson reportedly called him aces. Oh, looks like uh, Kendall gave him a shot and oh, Cordova's just spun Burnfart Jr. because Burnfart Jr. made him lose the lead there. Burnfart Jr., what are you doing? Uh, stay out of the way of the leaders, please. Thank you very much. All right, let's get another view of what happened here. As it looks like Cordova is trying to fight out a charge by Kindle on the outside. And uh, Burnfart Jr., not really known for his spatial awareness, got in the way and got dumped into the Inglesby fence. Uh, as I mentioned before, not known for his spatial awareness. This isn't going to look good for him as uh, that incident definitely didn't help his, uh, his uh, reputation any. As here, Clara Kindall has opened up her lead to quite a few seconds over uh, Nicholas Cordova's. You don't even really see him on the screen as uh, he's kind of gone. As Clara Kindall now just opens up her lead to at least five or six seconds uh, over Nicholas Cordova's, just kind of driving away from him as uh, Cordovos is exploding, or rather imploding at this point. Here is Ramsey Cockner, and something doesn't look right with that car. He's slow entering the garbage dump, and uh, yep, judging by how fast those cars are going by, something's not right. He's slowing down to a crawl here. Something's definitely wrong with this car, as uh, he just kind of brings it to a stop there on the inside, and uh, that's going to be the end of the day for that number 82 star. Uh, tough break for him. He is running in the top five as Lewis Jones brings his car into the pits here on, I believe this is lap number 17. He brings his car in from eighth place. I think this might be the start of uh, green flag pit stops, the first round of green flag pit stops. As now we're going to go and look at Tom Delgado and his uh, legacy, or not his saga, excuse me, with Brian Gallagher. As Gallagher shoves him off wide again, as uh, Delgado drives through the drives through the dirt there, doing a little bit of rally cross, and uh, he gets that car back on track. I can't say he's too pleased with Brian Gallagher right now, as this is the second time uh, in th during this race that this has happened. And it looks like he just runs him off the road this time, and uh, Delgado really has no choice but to drive into this upper paved area, and uh, dirt tracks it back onto the track. Uh, really kind of getting bullied around uh, is Tom Delgado as the 39 car dives into the pits the next lap here and uh, I think there's going to be a few other leaders joining him in the pits here as uh, yep we've got Greg Maddox and Gaspar D'Souza diving into the pits so the top two three and four pit but Clara Kendall stays out an extra lap as does Cameron Taylor in the number 77 here and uh, Ingrid Hadeland pulling into the pits collides with Greg Maddox and I uh, think there's gonna be a little inquiry into that uh, that did quite a bit of damage to the front of Hadeland's car but she would not retire the next lap, lap 20 uh, Kendall brings her car into the pits and uh, I don't really see anybody behind her for quite a few seconds now oh it looks like Cameron Taylor and a few other cars are coming in now but they're way behind. Here is uh, the rest of the leaders. Well, at least uh, top 15 cars bringing their cars into the pits. As now, Clara Kindle pulls out from the pits. And, oh, there you there you see Nicholas Corradovo's way in the distance back there as he just entered the snake just as she was entering this bend here. As uh, Kindle had one hell of a stop, looks like she's going to pull away from the uh, other leaders even more as Greg Maddox, it looks like he's made up some ground. Here is Chris Winter currently running 8th with Ike Durbin trying to fight off Durbin as oh Durbin is on his bumper all through that bend and he just spins him off the turn not really sure what I'm not sure what that was about but it looks like he's going to continue on Chris Winter is he didn't get any damage from that we're going to go on board with Ike Durbin and just watch and see how he just 
stays on the bumper. I don't know what he did to do that to Ike Durbin. So uh, the officials might launch an inquiry into that one as well. Uh, so uh, not really sure what that was about with Ike Durbin and uh, Chris Winter. Apparently Chris Winter did something to piss him off. As here we've got here we've got John Bracci and Lewis Jones running nose to tail, doing a bit of bump teamwork uh, bump drafting. As uh, oh no, they're not playing like teammates. As Bracci nearly uh, sideswiped his teammate. As now they're trying to get around Ingrid Hadland, but it, lo it looks like they're too busy battling each other to really uh, take advantage of Hadland, whose front end is a bit smashed up. But this battle is going on for. Uh, for sixth position right now, as uh, Hadeland holds down sixth with her slightly damaged car. As these two are going side by side, as they've been side by side for the past half lap now. So uh, team orders not really in effect at Australian Motorsports. As now Bracci takes the spot from Jones, as now they head into that bend. Here is. Barry Juvenau, who is not taking very kindly to being lapped by Clara Kindall, as uh, Juvenau's been kind of outspoken about his hatred for not only Ian Elias, but also Manticore, as he just powers through there, leaving uh, Kindall to really check up to avoid running into him. So Barry Juvenau definitely doesn't want to be lapped, even though he's not quite on the pace of, uh, not quite on the pace of Kindall but certainly trying to stay in front of the leader, which uh, I'm not too sure the officials are too happy with that. They're, they were showing him the blue flags, but uh, they retracted those, and now they're, uh, I think they're starting to think about showing them again as it looks like Kindall's starting to really get held up and isn't, isn't too happy. She tries to poke her nose in there and uh, has to back off once again as Juveno is throwing his car kind of all over the place at this point. Here, uh, looks like Kindall's gonna take a peek on the inside and Juvenal finally lets her by, uh, finally abiding to the blue flags. Uh, I think his crew warned him that if he, if he didn't, that the, there might have been some consequences. And now we go on board Nicholas Cordovo's trying to find uh, Kindall's. Yep, he's starting to close in on Kindall, but uh, Barry Juveno is definitely holding her up a bit, and that's going to allow for Corridovos to catch up, but now uh, Juveno's not playing very nice. Uh, he's blocking Corridovos now, and uh, Corridovos isn't having any of that. He bumps him, makes it clear that he's trying to get through, that he's you know got, got a battle to go uh, do with the leader, but... Ju Juveno doesn't care. Juveno doesn't give a shit. He's just blocking the leaders. He's running his own race, um, doing what he can. And, yep, oh, there we go. Cordovo's once again showing his displeasure, hooking the 65 car. And uh, th this isn't looking good for Juveno. Juveno being a pretty, pretty bad backmarker honestly, as he's just blocking, he's blocking Cordovos, he blocked Kindall. The, what are you doing, Juveno? Just, just let him by, seriously. You're like 25th. Let him on by. Let them do their battle. Oh, okay, there. He, I guess he took the hint. As uh, Now, it looks like he's not giving Maddox too much trouble. Um, so he's still side by side with Cordovos, but I think he's going to let him by. Yep, he let him by there. As here's Kale Burnfart Jr., who just kind of gets in the way of Chris Winter and gets dumped into the inside wall. Burnfart Jr., once again, not known for his spatial awareness. Uh, just kind of got going there, going straight. And now, later in the same lap, here's Andy Lambert trying to make a move on the outside. And... Really? <laughs> really? Uh, Burnfart Jr. just kind of... Pulls up into Lambert and shoves him into the kitty litter over there in the second to last turn. And uh, I, th I think the officials are going to have want to have a word with uh, Burnfart Jr. after that. Is, that, that was pretty silly. That, that was honestly pretty silly. Is now Andy Lambert, uh, last year's champion, uh, just tries to get his car going once again. Here is Sam Brown. And uh, 
got this gaggle of cars going here. We've got, uh, I think that's Cody Deke back there, but this battle, they just got lapped, uh, but this battle here is for 15th place, so he's kind of, he's done a good job in that car, and um, really just hanging on. He's gained positions here and there as cars have fallen out due to attrition, and uh, Sam Brown doing what he can. He's got Cody Deke behind him, Rob Nelson, a uh, strong run for Nelson in that 029 car, considering that uh, Kindall's really just been the class of the field and has just been annihilating everybody here today. As now Corey Dovo's finally starting to catch up. He got around the lapped cars, and oh no, the gearbox just broke on that car. He downshifted too fast, over revved the thing, and she just blew up on him as. Uh, Cordova's understandably frustrated as he pulls that car off to the side of the road, parks it, and uh, just understandably frustrated as there goes his chance at closing in on the championship as, uh, I mean, he's going to finish a few positions in front, but Clara Kindall's just gone. She's going to win this race unless she screws up majorly because right now it looks like uh, I don't even see second place. Second place right now would be Greg Maddox, and looking on the straight, I don't even see him. So it looks like kindall has got this locked up. Oh, Greg Maddox dives into the pits here on lap number 33 from second place. Uh, Greg Maddox has inherited that position, but he's not as fast as Kindall. As now, it looks like uh, Gaspar de Souza has inherited second, and very juvenile. Are you, seriously. Seriously, Barry Juveno, are, are you going to keep doing this? As uh, Gaspar de Souza has inherited second place, um, once again, I I'm shocked that nobody's taken out Barry Juveno because he is, he is uh, honestly the worst of the back markers today. He is not letting the leaders go through. But Gaspar de Souza is salvaging a very strong run. He is currently running in second place, uh, dealing with... Uh, that lapped car there that just kind of won't budge as now we've got a bunch of uh, cars that are running running roughly in the top 10 we've got uh, Jones Durbin Hadeland and Grant coming in and now with just a few laps to go I believe just about 10 laps to go we've got uh, Kindall dives into the pits but she could have pit an extra time honestly and just kept the lead it looks like as oh there goes Cody Deeks end and he was running pretty strong actually I believe he was in the top 15 and uh, he's trying to get his way back into the pits uh, although he's dumping oil all over the place pulls that car into the pits and yeah some people got oil on their tires looks like uh, Ben Worthington running right behind there pulls on the inside Worthington was struggling all day he was hoping to get into the pits here and get some changed tires but oil on the tires you just missed the pits tough break for him he'd uh, have to come in the next lap as uh, here is I believe that's Cameron Taylor Cameron Taylor is currently leading actually because he didn't pit so I retract that current sta that uh, previous statement that if uh, Kindall had hadn't or had pit an extra time uh, that she wouldn't be the leader. Oh, but no, there she is on screen, right behind, uh, right behind Taylor, behind uh, Juveno there. So uh, she nearly um, Pitt and had an advantage. As uh, now Clara Kindall retakes the lead. Cameron Taylor did get an extra lap, and oh, he just dumped Greg Woodard into the wall. As uh, I think Cameron Taylor is a little frustrated at the uh, dominance of the Manticores. Either that or, oh, it looks like Woodard swung wide trying to get back in line for his pits because he's got one of the first pit stalls and uh, just kind of had nowhere to go. Uh, Cameron Taylor, it looks like uh, 23 car Casey Lester is reporting some brake trouble and oh, he hits the pit wall and that's going to be the end of the day as he proved to people that he's not actually that bad after all. He was running in 26th place at the time, a pretty decent run. As now, Clara Kindall once again has just pulled out to an absolutely massive lead that at this point, unless she blows up, 
or gets wrecked is an insurmountable lead. Uh, Greg Maddox, I believe, is in second place, and he's about 20, 20 odd seconds behind. As now we're starting to get, starting to get a little um, battle going here, with just a few laps to go, just four laps to go for about fifth through eleventh, really. And uh, we've got Lewis Jones, the Australian Motorsports Brigade, in here. A couple other cars, as uh, looks like Ike Durbin's in this mess. A couple other cars back there: Tom Delgado, Brian Gallagher, Ingrid Hadeland is still in here, even with that damaged race car. Now it looks like Lewis Jones starting to pull away from them a bit, doing what he can. But they've got some lap cars: Ben Worthington and Dan Ferre. As here comes Clara Kendall to take the win here at. Grant at, uh, excuse me, not Grand Detour, at Decatur. Clara Kendall wins at Decatur, but this is the most exciting battle on track. The battle for fifth place, uh, actually the battle for fifth through twelfth now, as uh, here is Lewis Jones leading over his teammate uh, Michael Grant, but it looks like Brian Gallagher is going to pull on the inside and throw his hat into the mix as uh, they nearly go three wide in that bend. For fifth place on the last lap, as here is Ike Durbin, Cameron Taylor making a huge charge through the field. So now Ike Durbin starting to fade a bit. There is Chris Winter, who got spun around earlier, uh, caught right back up again to this group. As now Cameron Taylor turns on the afterburners and just blasts on by. He's going for 10th place, doing what he can, trying to salvage a top 10 in this race, and I think he's going to be able to do it. As now, here's Lewis Jones coming through. He's got fifth place right now, but Brian Gallagher, Gallagher drafting up on him. Gallagher making a move. Gallagher pulls alongside, and it's going to be a photo finish for fifth place as I think Gallagher got him at the line. I think Gallagher got him at the line. We're going to look at this in ultra slow motion, and right at the line, you can see that Brian Gallagher nabbed Lewis Jones for fifth place. What a run. As now, we're looking back at the battle for ninth place between Hadeland and Cameron Taylor. Cameron Taylor charged from 12th to up to 9th at this point. Uh, but it looks like I think Hadeland's going to get with some drafting help from Dan Ferre. Yep, she does. But that was a very close battle and arguably the best battle we've seen at this track in quite some time. Greg Maddox finishes a distant second. Gaspar de Souza runs a very quiet third, as well as uh, John Bracci. I barely even mentioned Bracci throughout the entire race, but he was running up near the front for pretty much the entire race. Brian Gallagher nabbed fifth place in that very close finish over Lewis Jones. Michael Grant gets his second top ten in a row. Tom Delgado, uh, despite getting pushed off the track twice by Brian Gallagher, uh, finishes a strong eighth. Ingrid Hadeland in her debut for the Williams Racing Team finishes ninth place with a damaged car and Cameron Taylor rounds out your top ten here at Decatur.